Ho, ho, listeners. Welcome to the Incorrigible Christmas special, where we are playing our usual characters in a whole nother realm of existence. So without further ado, let me set the scene. Also, thanks for bearing with me. This is my first time DMing. And quick big shout out to Jessica Atwater and Siskelm for helping me create this adventure. And, I mean, of course I pester Leland and everyone else, but, you know, whatever. Nothing new. All right, you guys ready? Ready. Let's do it. Let's do it. So we are all on the rising 3000. Gathered around the table, (laughs) relaxing, enjoying a nice evening together somehow. Falls are enslaved in the kitchen all day and made his first ever shepherd's pie. (laughs) (laughs) Unimpressed after one bite, Mia gave the rest of hers to Sparky while no one was looking. And after everyone drifts off into a full-bellied sleep, you all wake up, suddenly feeling a cool breeze on the nape of your neck. Your hairs stand on end. You see soft snowfall. Light reflects off each fluffy flake. Bewitched by the magic of it all, you notice a gigantic castle in the distance. The fortress is fortified by a large wall, the countless spires lit with twinkling lights reflecting off the icicle-covered roof and peaks. You're all completely mesmerized as a dainty pink fairy appears in front of the group, fluttering her sparkling wings. Welcome, travelers. Hey, what be this nonsense, I tell ya? Hello. What? Where are, where are we? Who are you? I'm the Sugar Plum Fairy. You can call me Sugar for short. She looks at Shaft and winks. Hey, hi. I <laughs> wink back. Well, what, what are you doing here, and uh, where are we? We're in the North Pole. And um, I need your help. You need to save Christmas. What is Christmas? Where, where the hell did you take us in, in the Rising 3000? Does this thing uh, even have a rudder? This not be my doing, I tell you. Sorry, you, you, what did you say? What, Christmas? Yeah, Christmas. Santa's being held hostage by the Mouse King. Okay, this is all... What is Christmas? To, who is Santa? What is a Santa? What is a Mouse King? Is everybody here? We need to hurry. Where's Mia? Oh. I don't know. I think she might be sleeping one off. Okay, if this is everybody, let me lead the way. And she takes off, and she's so small and goes so fast, all you can see now is this, like, trail of glitter and pixie dust that she leaves behind. Well, I... uh, She doesn't seem dangerous. I suppose we follow her? I will not be looking forward to christening yet another reason. 3001, uh, uh, the ring of it, the name, she she feel bad in my mouth, I tell you. I hope we get her back after this. Maybe this fairy will lead us back to her. Mm. Well, the only way is forward. I look around. Is there anything around us other than this castle? Are we out in a, in a wasteland? It essentially is the North Pole sort of situation. There's, It's pretty barren um, from what you can imagine. There's occasional pine trees, um, hills of snow. It's kind of blustery. There's a little bit of a frozen pond in front of you. But this castle is, let's say, like 100 yards, like a football field away. And you can kind of see in the distance, like I said, this glittering, shimmering pathway that that the pixie's taking you or, or asking you to follow. Well, we can't stay out here. It's too damn cold. I guess we can at least go in the castle and check it out. I start following the pathway. I follow as well. Yep. Yep. So as you get closer to the castle, a field of snowmen comes into your line of sight. There's rows and rows of men made of snow, some with top hats, all have charcoal eyes and some carrot noses, and you continue to follow the pathway. I'm going to put you in roll 20 here. The, the pixie dust pathway is written on the map here, and uh, you guys just tell me what you want to do. Uh, are these snowmen, do they just look like snowmen that somebody made, or are they moving? They're not moving, and yeah, they look like they were formed by somebody. Okay, eh. I'm not too concerned. I'll keep on following the path. 
I'm yeah, I'm gonna kinda keep an eye on them, but I'm gonna walk along the path. I will look over and go, Where the hell do they get carrots up here? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Shakara and Grimby up front um, start noticing that as they get closer to one of these snowmen here, he uh, he starts to kind of shuffle toward you. Uh, it's just made of snow, right? I mean, uh, it should be able to smash it apart pretty easy. Well, uh, perhaps we can just make haste and and not have to deal with these if they decide to become threatening. Can we still see the sugar plum fairy? Nope, she's gone. We see her trail through the through the air, though, in the location that she went, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. I'll just pick up the pace. Yeah, I'm just gonna hurry along. I'm gonna draw my sword, but hurry along as well. As you pick up the pace, um, which puts you closer proximity to multiple snowmen, let's roll for initiative. <laughs> Well, that didn't take long. No. <laughs> Hot dog. Nat 20 for Palsy. Oh. What? Ooh. No way. Oh, yeah. If ever there was a time for a flaming sphere. Right? <laughs> mm, right? <laughs> what did everyone else get? 22. I have a 14. Grimby got a 2. <laughs> oh, oh, buddy. <laughs> All right, Shaft. You're first. So this, this one right uh, here, is it coming my way? The one that's off to my left-hand side. Looks like he's about, uh, what? It's like 10 feet away. Um, 10 feet away. Yeah. And uh, do, do, does he have any facial expression? Has he got a smiley face uh, made of coal? Or is it, ah, I'm going to kill they you. They have so a man. creepy smile. They're just smiling but look scary. Because they're moving pretty fast. Okay. So I'm going to uh, take my Chucky whip out my uh, shaft's whip, and I'm going to whip him and try to take his uh, his head clean off of his body. All right, roll to hit. That is a 13 to hit. All right, you get him. Oh, cool. How okay. much damage? Eight points of damage. So my, my thought was I'm going to try to wrap it around his head, and I believe I'm going to go look up my shaft, my... Uh, whip here because I haven't actually used Target must make a contested grapple check. Athletics. Uh, <laughs> if grappled as a bonus action, you can use a pulse. Okay, well, poison damage is not going to make much difference, but uh, I'm going to try to see if he can, if I can just rip his, pull his head clean off. Alright, let's see. What kind of save was it? Uh, it's a contested grapple, I think, is what we're trying to do. So we both roll a d20 and uh, use our strength. Okay, I got a 16. I got a 23. All right, this guy's dead. So, well, <laughs> Boom. I have him grappled. You, you whip, and then as you're pulling it, just the head tumbles. <laughs> and as the head tumbles, some of the charcoal and that creepy smile is popping out. And there are, th- there are three snowballs, right? So the second one just rolls off without the head. Oh, these guys go down easy. <laughs> I tell you, they just made a snow. <laughs> <laughs> Good hit there, Shaft. All right, so next is Falzern. Thanks, Jim. Okay, Falzern is going to concentrate momentarily and produce a flaming sphere. He's going to place it a little bit ahead and to his right, where the closest snowman is to him. Um, And then I'll use my bonus action to make an attack against that snowman who it's right adjacent to. Also, I'm trusting you all to know how your spells work, so if you have to cast anything for that, you, you gotta tell me. Because I'm not gonna... I think it would take forever, right, for me to look up each of your spells and read the text and make sure. So you have to make a deck, deck save. save. 13. Uh, so that's against my spell save DC, which you fail. So six fire damage. All right, well, this snowman, even with that six fire damage... You can just tell that that fire damage was extremely, extremely effective against the snowman, and he just melts into a puddle with a carrot and a top hat on the ground. <laughs> hey, there must have been some magic in that old circle <laughs> fire. <laughs> your best there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next up, Shikara. Uh, so I saw how good the fire did. Yep. And just so you guys know, um, 
Shaft and Falzerin, you stayed in the same place unless you want to move your tokens for movement. Neither of you moved. Uh, I think I will take my my 25 foot of movement. Okay. Just want to be sure. Yeah, I'm going to use my 30 feet to move straight ahead. I'm, I'm trying to make haste and follow the trail of this sugar plum fairy leading to the castle. I am going to use my circlet of blasting. All right. I create three rays of fire and hurl them at targets within range. I can hurl them at three different targets if I want. All right, what's the range? Oh, that's a good question. Oh, 120 feet. I think oh, there I'm good. you go. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I need to make three spell attacks, and if they hit, it takes 2d6 damage. How heavily right. is it snowing up? By the time your scorching ray hits, the snow has put it up. No, uh, it's just no. kind of. <laughs> just Don't kind give of any ideas, Leland. Slowly falling. So I'm going to hit this one that's about 20 feet away from me on my right first. All right. And that would be a 18 plus. Oh, yeah, plus, he's hit. Okay. Plus something. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's 2d6 for him. And that is five paws plus two. So seven damage. A fire. All right. So he's uh, just he's just hanging on. He looks near melted. I'll try and hit him again then, and that is uh oh, I think that one might have missed. That's a three plus eight. It's eleven. Eleven hits. Yeah, oh, he's cool. he's down. He's dead. Okay, I don't even need to roll. Nope. And then I will hit this one that is off to my left a little bit. Closest to the pathway of the dust for you guys. Yeah, and that is uh oh that's a twenty. Not yeah, nat- that hits. Not natural. And that is nine points of damage. Nine fire. Yep, so again, that fire is extremely effective, and so that snowman is just melted. And the charcoal is actually kind of starting to light a little bit, like like coals on a barbecue. You kind of got it. And then uh. I will run ahead. And you move up. All right, let's see here. All right. What are you guys' uh, passive perceptions? Fourteen for shaft. Ten. Eleven. 15 for me. Guys, they got to be sharp out on the seas, I tell ya. So, Shaft and Grimby. Grimby's still the furthest behind because of his slow initiative and his peg leg or whatever. You notice (laughs) some rustling behind the trees in the left corner um, that's blacked out for you guys right now. So I'm going to reveal that area for you. Oh, Mm. boy. Hmm. Would you look at that? Behind the tree, Shaft and Grimby, you notice this creature with snow white fur moving like a ghost against the snowy landscape, three times as tall as the average human. And he steps out and moves right into the center. Oh, damn. Of the pathway of Pixie He's a Dust. He's just welcoming us here, right? And his arms are, yeah, his arms are out, and he's, and he's going, Rrrr! and uh, Grimby, take your turn. So, be, it's beyond this Yeti thingamajigger, is like the entrance to the castle, or so like the fortification, the walls have like a fifteen foot gap, that's pretty open. Um, and this is kind of an obvious pathway to get to the castle. Okay, well, shoot. Grimmy was going to suggest just booking it because there's a lot of snowmen out here. But, uh, all right, he's just going to charge in. He does have 40 feet of movement. Grimmy's pretty quick. Nice. Good peg leg, and right? Good right. peg leg, yeah. It's a state-of-the-art peg leg. It's got a wheel on it. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> It's a, it's a Healy. Yeah, it's a Healy. <laughs> Push along and <it> slide. <laughs> oh, wow. I have advantage on initiative rolls that I did not take. <laughs> yeah, not with a two you didn't take it. Whoopie doodle. Okay, then what he's going to do is he's just going to use his action to dash in, kind of oh, wow. circle around the Yeti, get close to the snowman. He's just dashing in. Okay, so Shakara, to your left, there's a snowman within 25 feet of you, and he comes right up next to you. And you Hello. need to do a deck save throw for me. Okay, I rolled a 13 plus 10, 23. Oh, wow, okay, so you saved. Oh, sorry, that was an 18. 
So that's a 28, <laughs> sorry. He stays right up on you, but you saved. And uh, Shaft, same for you. Dex saving throw, please. You are close to Shakara. Dex, that is a 25. 25, all right, you save as well. And let's see here. Ooh, just... These snowmen are going to advance as far as their movement will take them. About 30 feet. Closing in on you guys. But no one is in reach of falls or in. Grimby, can you give me a deck save for this snowman that's right up and in, in on you? I do have advantage of that. Because of my danger sense. Which is a 15. Alright, so you as well. Save. Just barely. And you, you hold your ground. Now for the yeti. Hey, you big smelly monster, I'll be right here. Come at me. <laughs> so this yeti is within reach of Grimby, within five feet of Grimby, and he is going to target one creature he can see with his chilling gaze. So since you can see the yeti, you must succeed on a DC 18 con saving throw. Well, I got a 23. <laughs> Take more than that, feral look at me, you stinky beast, I tell ya. Oh, dang. Okay, so nothing happens to Grimby. And the Yeti is just, the abominable Yeti, actually, is extremely upset and lashes out with a claw weapon attack, which is 14 to hit. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and... You will take 14 slashing damage plus 4 cold damage. And you're the only one close enough here, so he does another claw attack. And that attack is going to hit. It's like 29 or something. <laughs> so you take. You're, you're Grimby's level 9, like everyone else, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so you take then, with the second hit. Another 14 slashing, and three cold damage. Damn. Yeah, it's me getting a bit nipply over here. I, I might uh, need a bit of hand with this. <laughs> 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 All right, and next in the order is Shaft. All right, so these uh, snowmen, looks like they take up four squares here. Are they large? Oh, sorry. No, they should be one. I don't know how to snap them to the grid properly. Oh, okay. I just want to make sure I don't... I'm going to move around him, but not get outside for an opportunity attack. Right, okay. And, I got gotcha. And then I'm going to cast a flame arrow. Yep. Um, so I pull out of my quiver a, a flaming arrow, and I'm going to shoot this uh, abominable snowman beast that's beating up on Chum. Mm-hmm. All right, so that is a natural one, but I have <laughs> oh, no. a lot of re-rolls and lucky, so I'm just going to re-roll since I'm a halfling. Oh, goodness. I get lucky. Uh, that's better, but not fantastic. Did a 14 hit him? No, 14 does not hit. All right, second, I'm going to pull another flaming arrow out, and I'm going to sort of lean up against the snowman there to get a better, little bit better leverage, and that's better. 18. 18 hits. Awesome. Okay. And that is uh, 11 points of damage. All right. And is that straight piercing or does it take any fire damage? What? Uh, it doesn't say. It says, well, oh, I'm sorry. I get the 1d6 fire damage on top of that. Thank you. You're welcome. An additional one fire damage. All right. Well, that, that matters. All right. That matters. Okay. All right. So next up is Falzerin. So I'm pretty well surrounded here by snowmen. Yes, indeed. However, you did see the snowmen try to overwhelm your fellow comrades and they didn't, they stood their ground. It didn't do anything, right? Like it was extremely difficult. They weren't lashing out with their twig arms and hitting. They were just trying to sort of push and overwhelm your, mm. your party members. I see. In case that helps visually what you were seeing. Yeah, so I will definitely, um, at least make use of my bonus bonus action to move my flaming sphere and ram it into uh, the snowman that is closest to me, which is on my left here, my left and slightly behind me. And there's a he has a few buddies with him as well. So does he have to make a save or what is that? A deck mean? save. Deck okay. save. Six. Okay, so that's a fail. He takes six fire damage. 
Alright, and again, you can tell that that fire damage is extremely effective, so he is melted down, and all you can see is a head um, still hanging in there. Does he scream, I'm melting! Yeah, he's probably not going to be able to walk, though. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Do they have legs, or are they rolling? Uh, no, they're kind of like... Shuffling? Shuffling moving yeah. magically, yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're like scooting. They're like working their <laughs> arms like a... <laughs> speed walker at the mall <laughs> that was your bonus action what else you got I am going to cast fireball yeah okay and I think I'm going to choose to uh, place it around myself and shaft and shakara as opposed to up by the abominable yeti because I'm going to hit a lot more enemies Okay. because we're surrounded right now it has a radius of what again 20. So if I center it on myself. Yeah, you're killing like potentially eight snowmen about. And you're sculpting safety for your buds, I'm guessing. That's right. All right. So myself, Shaft, and Shakara will be um, protected. And I will tell you damage, and then you can uh, decide who passes and who fails. All right. When I um, created this scene, I was, I don't know if any of you guys, but for sure there's listeners out there that remember the snowman scene in the parking lot at the office where like Dwight builds a ton of different snowmen all over and Jim is just freaking out like not knowing if Dwight is inside one of the snowmen or what's going to (laughs) happen or if they're going to move so for those who don't pass their deck save it's 35 damage yeah I mean it's 35 damage because it's double so you your fireball just erupts from you just in these in these two snowmen, one's on shaft, one's on Shikara, they just seemingly just vaporize. There's not even puddles anymore. This fireball steams them out of existence, all eight of these snowmen. And again, the charcoal eyes and mouth are just kind of glowing coals on the ground, melting into the snow. Ah, oh, nice. that was satisfying. And do you have any movement or anything else you want to do? I will move up just a smidgen, uh, maintaining proximity to um, Shakara on my left and Shaft on my right. All right. Next is Shakara. So all the snowmen's around me are gone. I am going to run up to the Yeti and yell, It's flame! <laughs> and flame breath him. He has to make a dex save. Okay. That's a four. Oh, he did not make it. Mm Mm-mm. He's a big boy. So that is 13 points of fire damage. Nice, nice. That fire damage, again, it is... It is not necessarily extremely effective, but you can tell that he just hates it. He's completely distracted by the fire damage in his, his usual arctic environment. Next is... Grimby. Rage! Okay, bam. Let's just lay into this mother hugger yeti. My great axe, two swipes. That's a 22. That hits. Uh, Nine slashing. Okay. Second hit is an 18. That hits as well. And nine more slashing. Nice job. And I also, being... Uh, having to having being the primal path of the storm herald barbarian I do have a storm aura which comes in effect uh, when I start my rage or I can just do it as a bonus action on each of my turns so I can choose one creature within 10 feet of me to make a dexterity saving throw please snowman or yeti uh, yeti please <laughs> <laughs> deck save is five that is a fail Mm-hmm. As just much kind of similar to Mia, I guess her mastery over Storm, but not quite to the extent that uh, Grimby. But he harnesses the power of the sea and the storms of which he's braved many aboard Rising One through two thousand nine hundred and ninety-nine. <laughs> yes. Dealing, oh, uh, six lightning damage to the Yeti, All exploding right. from his chest Bam. and the static electricity around him. Twenty-seven points from Grimby. Nice job. And that's it. The Yeti's turn. Uh, actually, Grimby, I'm going to have the snowman that's up on you 
Um, I'm gonna make you make a dex saving throw, please. Oof, five. That was with the Five. <laughs> Grimby, you are knocked prone. I do me best work from the ground. I don't write Shigara. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> this is too good. Oh, um, also, another another snowman coming up on Falzerin. Deck save, please. There's one within reach of each of you, actually. So each of you can do a deck save. 14 for Falzerin. Did you add the plus four from being next to me? I did not. There you go. So Falzerin saves. 24 for Shaft. 24 saves. And actually, Shakara, you're further away from Falzerin, but it's okay. Oh, that's right. I'll I give it to you. that one. I'm up there. I'll give it to you. It's fine. Because 14 is is uh, pretty good. It's fine. All right. So you're all standing your ground. Grimby's knocked on his butt. And the Yeti is going to to try to cast his chilling gaze on Shakara this time. You need to make a DC 18 con save, please. Uh, that's 5 plus 5 plus 4. 14. 14. So that's a fail. So you are paralyzed for one minute. And you take 66 cold damage. Ooh. Yikes. So paralyzed means that you're incapacitated. You can't move or speak. You fail all strength or deck saves. Attacks have advantage against you. And if an attack comes from within 5 feet of you, it's an auto crit. Lo siento. Okay, I rolled low. That's 15 cold damage. Also, Shikara, you um, can repeat a saving throw at the end of each of your turns. So, like, next turn you don't have anything, and if you success, the effect ends and you're immune to this gaze for an hour. Okay. So, he's going to, um, after getting that damage from Grimby, he's going to use his two claw attacks against Grimby. And although they have a pretty decent boost to hitting, he has disadvantage because of getting fire damage last round. Uh, but I am prone, so he has advantage on me. <gasps> Ooh! So that is a, that's gonna hit though, it's 19. Yeah, my, my AC's only 12. It's pretty low. You have like no armor on? I got no sleeves on. <laughs> <laughs> you have, you're sleeveless, Grimby. Oh my That's some gosh. northern exposure right there. <laughs> Raise your hand if you're not. Surprised. That is um, not surprised. <laughs> nine slashing damage and six cold damage. Oof. Okay. Well, the other thing is, I am raging, so at least the slashing is half, but I take the full cold. Okay. And then <sighs> he will swipe one at you and like backhand at Shikara with his next attack. So. But I'm paralyzed. Oh, but you're paralyzed. Frick. Okay, so it was only 17 to hit. So, technically, 17 wouldn't have hit Shikara. No. So, that that misses altogether. Cool. <laughs> All right, we're back to uh, Shaft. <laughs> okay, I'm going to sort of roll around the bottom of this uh, snowman. Yeah. And try to get a, a clean shot. I see Shikara's down. So, I'm going to uh, take the first flaming arrow out of my uh, quiver, and I'm going to try to pump it into that, one of that, that snowman's head just to get him out of the, the picture here. Oh, that's a crit. That's awesome. You crit so much, John. <laughs> it's uh, not... it's, it's, I like this particular die. Uh, the other one was, isn't worth a shit. Well, this is a snowman, so he's going to take like 32 points of damage, so I'm assuming he's going down. You're hitting the snowman. Okay. Which? Well, that was what I said. I, the snowman up by Shakara. Yep, he's gone. Yep. He's melted. And then my second attack with the second flaming arrow... Uh, that is a 10. 10 does not hit. Damn it. Okay. Do you want to move at all? Um, I moved around the snowman. I didn't want to yeah. give him an opportunity attack. All right. Volzern. Okay. What you got? So, uh, we have a snowman that's right up in my business to my left here. Shaft is ahead of me to the right. Um, okay. I'm going to use my bonus action to slam this uh, flaming sphere into the snowman beside me. So it'll wind up being, uh, the snowman will be in between me and the flaming sphere because I don't want to um, end my turn adjacent to the flaming sphere. Yeah, there we go. So a deck save. Two. Four. Um, fire damage, flaming damage, whatever you want to call it. Fire damage. Okay. And 
he's still up after that. Yeah, he's halfway melted, but he doesn't look like he's going to move anymore. Like I said, kind of melted the middle out of him. I'm going to take a chance at moving away from him and see if I take an opportunity attack or not. All right. Okay, so I move to my right. The snowman kind of melts and tries and doesn't move. Okay, perfect. And then... No and then. And then... <laughs> I had to. I think I will throw a cantrip at this yeti. So a firebolt is 23 to hit. It hits. Nine fire damage. So you fling this firebolt and he just goes... Shikara. I assume the only thing I can do is do my uh, save to try and be not paralyzed. Mm, yes. What kind of save was that again? A con save. 20. Yeah, okay. So the effect is gone. It's successful and you are immune to his gaze for the next hour, which hopefully won't be necessary. I give him a dirty look. <laughs> You're not Returns immune to my gaze. gaze. Okay. <laughs> All right, Grimby. Okay, gonna stand up. There you go. Gonna keep on beating this fucking yeti. You've been the most effective so far. Only because I was paralyzed. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> First hit is a 26. Oh, yeah, smokes him. 13 slashing. Second hit is a 23 with 14 slashing. Wow. And I will zap him with my aura. Dang. So a dexterity saving throw as well. Okay. It's a six. That's a fail. Six more lightning. Full power. Yeah, Grimby. Grimby has single-handedly brought this yeti yeah. to looking pretty beat up. Oh. It be a quiet <laughs> rage, but a rage nonetheless, I tell you. <laughs> He's getting there. I know, I know you're expecting something else. He's almost there. The yeti... <laughs> On his turn, exasperated, takes a deep breath and exhales a 30-foot cone of frigid air. He's going to, let's see, I was going to say, where's this 30 feet leave me? Oh, it reaches Shikara, Shaft, and Falzerin. Had to be a mighty bad case of halitosis. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, it just reeks. His breath. That's why you get in this blind spot. You always get that blush one there, do you? You all need to make me a con save, please. Oh, no. Rip. Uh, five for Falzerin. Ooh, Falzerin. Fail. 13, 13 for Shaft. Shaft, fail. Plenty. Shikara passes. Ooh, okay. All right, guys. At Shikara, she got the mastery of fire and ice, I tell you. Look at that. Look at her stand proud. Look at her stand tall. Let me uh, quick roll the cold damage here. Stand up a little straighter. <laughs> uh, the icy no. hot Shakira wounds, I tell you. The achy muscles. <laughs> <laughs> the Shakira O'Neal, you know what you're talking about, I tell you. Shikara, <laughs> you're going to take 10 cold damage. Falls in and shaft, you take 20. Grimby still has feeble mind on him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the Yeti is going to... Uh, you know what? He's going to stay right engaged with you guys. And he's he's going to save his chilling gaze for another time. All right. Back to Shaft. All right. Now let's see if we can put some arrows into this Yeti this time. So that's going to be uh, plus nine. That's 28 to hit. Oh, yeah. You hit him. That is going to be 16 points plus an additional 5 fire damage. Second attack. Are you making those with disadvantage? Uh, no. Should I be making them with disadvantage? Uh, if that's a snowman you're next to, yes. Oh, good point. Okay. Well, let me roll that one. Shh. The DM didn't notice. <laughs> Sorry. Damn it. <laughs> the backseating DM did. <laughs> It's alright. It's okay. You didn't put the no no backseat DM tag on. Uh, yeah, if you want to re-roll and see see what the true disadvantage. I'll re-roll that first one. The si okay. But you're we'll using your. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Okay, so the first one with disadvantage would be a plus nine eleven to hit. Yeah, that misses. All right, and then the second one with disadvantage 
That is a 15. 15 hits. Oh, these things have the same AC as Grimby. <laughs> it's brutal. All right, so damage-wise, it's going to be 18 points of damage and 5 fire damage. He's looking rough, guys. He's looking rough. And I'm going to... I am going to... No, I'm going to stay where I'm at. There's no point in moving. All right, falls are in. All right, so he's looking near dead. Mm-hmm. Is what I'm picking up on. Mm-hmm. I'm going to smash the flaming sphere into him first, using my bonus action, and see what sort of effect that has. So a deck save, please. Well, I'm guessing my save fails is 11. Yes, it does. So you take four um, fire damage. Still standing? Yep. Okay. Four damage. Pfft, come on. If you could see Bill's face. All right. I, um, I'm going to bust out one I haven't used in a while. So Falzerin is going to produce a small orb within his hand and send it careening towards this yeti. It's a four-inch diameter sphere of energy that I'm that Falzerin is going to make into uh, fire energy. Uh, 21 to hit. That hits. 14 fire damage. And this yeti is knocked to the ground, but he's still got like a fist in the air, like he wants to swing out at Shakara. But it's it's Shakara's turn. So it's not dead yet. Mm -mm. Well, I'm just going to bring my sword around and smack him. Do it. He's asking for a fist bump. Yeah, yeah, he's trying to fist bump you. <laughs> I rolled a 19. That would be plus 7, yeah. so that's a 26. Yep, that hits him. That is 7 points of damage. And Shikara, your sword skewers that fist reaching for a bump. And the Yeti's head falls to the ground. His blood red against the snow. And he's down. Granby, are you all right? I uh, took a bit of a beating there, but I still got the snowman on me. No, the snowman, when the Yeti dies, all disappear. And it's just the four of you and a flaming sphere and a bloody Yeti. Oh, that's right. I moved to the side. <laughs> Away from the sphere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. I don't think I'm going to like this Christmas thing. It uh be mighty cold, <laughs> I tell you. If this is all part of Christmas, I do not think I care for it either. Yes, I would much prefer being back in my comfortable stone humble abode in Heracleon. I never thought I would miss Aspara. I never thought I'd be safer on the rising thir- 3,000. I, I, I miss the <laughs> lapping of the waves. Where the hell is this fairy thing? I say we continue ahead and make it quick. All right, so you guys uh, get up to the door. And, uh, what do you want to do? Is it, what, what do we see? You, you get up to this exorbitant, crazy castle, icicle covered, lit, and you just see a very red front door. There is, um, like a metal knocker on it. There is a handle you could try. No one standing outside and nothing that you can see in the windows. And what does this building uh, look like? The castle? <laughs> Is that a joke? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> I uh, have described Does it. Look it. friendly, welcoming. A, a building? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll walk up next to the door and draw my sword. Shaft, open the door. Sure. I reach out and try to open it. Door opens. I'll look inside. Inside, you see a uh, tuxedoed penguin with a top hat and a bow tie. He just looks at you, kind of like one of those beady-eyed creatures. Just kind of cocks his head at you. i seen one of these before. It'd be a chicken. <laughs> chicken? Oh, yeah. I've seen chickens. This isn't a chicken. I'd be a chicken if I ever saw one, I tell Excuse ya. me, I am no chicken. Uh, no chicken. Where did the fairy go? Are you here to help save Christmas? Apparently. Potentially. You guys Mayhaps. don't seem very excited about it, but I'm, uh, I need your help right away. Don't you hear them? And there's, like, this crazy clamoring and screeching and, and noise coming from a distance. Who is this Christmas fella? Oh, no, 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 no. There's no Christmas fella, but there is Santa, the essence 
of Christmas. He's being held hostage. By whom? The Mouse King. Sugar told me that she told you these things. Where did Sugar go? I don't know where Sugar comes and goes. I mean, occasionally I see her glitter. To my knowledge, mice are really small. Oh, not the Mouse King. He's human-sized. Yeah? And, uh, tell us more about this Mouse King so we know what we're going up against. I mean, he has the cape and the crown and considers himself... Oh, God, he's got a cape? Yeah, he considers himself... I'm out! (sighs) And, um, the penguin, like, straightens his bow tie and, like, touches his forehead in exasperation. Please, if you're not here to help, never mind. Turn around. Why did the Mouse King take the Santa essence? (laughs) Well... No, yeah, this essence... uh, Listen, it's no essence. to make potions. Santa is a man. He's holding a man hostage. A man and an essence. (laughs) Well, I wish you had said that right at the outset. But I've already been in this castle and have a freedom by then. You guys, this Mrs. Christmas Claus nonsense. is acting very strange. Mrs. Claus is acting very strange. The elves in the workshop, please, we need help. They're they're attacking Santa's reindeer. How big are her claws? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I never saw that it said his name was Santa Claus. <laughs> do, you, do you suspect that Mrs. Claus might have some mouse king in her heritage? <laughs> I don't want to get anywhere near her. What are these? What in the world? Doing? Listen, let me show you. Come. Okay, <laughs> I guess we'll follow him. Oh. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, so you're in this, um, this large foyer area, and Christmas is everywhere. There's a huge twelve foot tree. There's twenty foot ceilings. There's chandeliers. There's garland, ribbons, glitter, greens and reds. So, does it look like, as John would put it, Christmas threw up everywhere? It looks like Christmas threw up everywhere. Because that's my decorating uh. style. <laughs> and there's the smell of candied almonds and fir trees. There's a warm, fuzzy feeling that you have deep down. Perhaps wondering if that is the essence. <laughs> uh, I, I, I smell... What is... Cyanide? I, I wonder if there's a, a festering wound around here. This candied almonds. Could be either. It's hard to say. You hear complete chaos, a screeching and chattering. Coming from straight ahead, there's a large wooden door that's cracked a little bit open, and above it, the sign reads, Caution, Toy Construction and Progress. So that's where the racket is, is coming from? Coming from yeah. Yes, that's where the noise is coming from. And uh, Is that where the penguin's leading us? You turn around, actually, to like call out to him, and the penguin is gone. Ah, Mr. No Chicken has mysteriously vanished. <laughs> I, I told you he was a chicken. Me. They need to get a better decorator in this place. This is this is insane. The people around here sure do like to disappear on us. Hey, it to be a trend in this place, I see. They ask for help and then they leave. Shikara, why don't you open this door here to this toy place? All right. I'll open the door. As you reach to open the door, Pepper, the penguin, pokes his head through again, cocking his head. I'm not disappearing. You guys are slow. Oh, that's a different voice. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to your voice? <laughs> this is my first time. <laughs> so we'll be gentle. So Pepper, you. no, we won't. Pepper co- cocks his head and goes, "Oh, I did not disappear. You guys are just so slow. Get in here." I will go first through the door. I'll follow. I follow. I will. All right. So you go into this workshop area that is extremely organized, um, and you see elves appearing they have vacant stairs there's something obviously wrong with them they're they're boxing and stuffing and packing packing peanuts into these reindeer um and they're they're wrapping them <laughs> wait, wait they're packing into the reindeer yeah and they're up the nose and the mouth okay we're not talking the back end or anything uh nasty but they're like seemingly robotic with blank stairs um, the workshop is extremely clean. The uniform, uh, the elves are all uniformed. They all have name tags on. Extremely organized with different sections and areas. There's sports and outdoors, electronics, stuffed animals, etc. Um, it's a multi-level room. So as you enter in, there's like balconies surrounding 
a courtyard type area and in the middle of this area there's there's four levels with balconies all looking over this very large christmas tree in the center of the room what do the elves look like uh they kind of look like shafts but with pointy ears how many of them are there a thousand that's a lot of elves yeah i mean you can't see them all but there's four four levels you're on the main level I've seen this before. They're factory workers. Look at the blank stairs. <laughs> this is somewhat of a... I'm not going to make that joke. <laughs> <laughs> Stopped myself. Pepper pipes up again. Mrs. Claus is acting... What's his voice? Frick. I lost it already. It's 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 it's, it's a poorly executed British Shut accent. Up! That's what it is. <laughs> Pepper pipes up again. Mrs. Claus is acting very strange. The elves, help the reindeer, help them. There's a world within a world, and it will stop. A world within a world. And then Pepper kind of just looks confused off into the distance. Stands still. So the elves are not supposed to be doing this to the reindeer. Hey, no kink shaming. Uh, I think uh, I'll walk over to one of the elves and just try to, like, grab their arms and just like stop them from stuffing <laughs> just try to like restrain them basically see if they react to me at all this elf is clearly labeled evergreen jingle pie and evergreen jingle pie resists your your movements of his, of his arms and doesn't say anything but just pushes up against you and if you were to let go he would just continue Picking up the packing peanuts. Okay, I'll keep... Jeez. Hey, uh, we might need a lot of rope. Hey, and uh, Evergreen, uh, that'd be a good name for a ship, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think uh, we can either cut off these elves' arms, or we can put the reindeer out of their misery. Bozrin, can you tell what is causing this effect on the elves? I can certainly... See if there's any sort of spell that I might recognize at play here. Um, could I make, uh, I guess, an arcana check to see if I recognize, or whatever check you think is uh, applicable, yeah. to see if I recognize that this might be the effects of a spell I'm familiar with? Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Do you want arcana or history? or Arcana. I... I mean, if you're already saying 20, it's probably fine. It's above 20. Yeah. Uh, what's my modifier? Yeah, 23. You can definitely tell that these elves are under some type of uh, charm or spell. Okay. You don't know where it's coming from or what's controlling them. However, if you would like, you could try to detect magic. Are the reindeer, like, restrained? They're just letting these elves stuff them. The reindeer, by the time you've come in, have, like, ribbons and garland wrapping their legs together, and they're, like, bucking and neighing, and part of the, the chaos and the noise is the reindeer going, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I, I, I put these beasts out of their misery, I tell ya. You. you clearly see nine cut them loose. reindeer. I, I'll start trying to cut them, cut the uh, ribbon off of them, off their legs. Okay, there. I think one of them. I think the reindeer are bucking out. As long as you're careful uh, to not get kicked or something, the elves aren't going to attack you. They'll just continue doing what they're doing mindlessly. You can you can try to slowly free the, these reindeer. It seems like they're charmed. There there's certainly some sort of spell at play here that's causing these elves to behave this way. Can you can you make it not make them not be charmed? I do have dispel magic. How does that spell you work? You said there's thousands of these, right? Yeah, there's there's a lot. So that's the thing. How does dispel magic work? Yeah. So, I've already given you a yeah. pretty big hint, and you didn't pick up on it, so that's fine. <laughs> she said detect magic. <laughs> I, I don't have detect magic. What? I swear you do. You've used it before. I have identify. Shakara's used detect magic before. Shakara's used detect magic. I, I know not. Mia has it, too. All right, well. Oh, I do have it. The other thing is... Uh, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm waiting for Paul's to do it. Okay. Um, no, we let's just tie these things up. And we, there's so much ribbon. Let's just tie all these elves up and leave them and get and tie a on. thousand elves up. There's so much ribbon. <laughs> <laughs> They'll take all night. <laughs> Sounds like a good plan, Grimby. You knock them out. I'll go get the ribbon. All right. I'm gonna turn my 
great axe over, and so I'm swinging with the handle, and I just start clubbing elves Balls over the head. To Balls start trying to knock them under something, some kind of control. Yes, Shakara, perhaps you can aid me in in detecting what is what is going on here. Do you do you detect the presence of any specific type of magic? Club vicinity. Ow. I start wrapping their legs. Club. This, this will take me a minute. <laughs> <Ow>. <laughs> It's ten minutes uh, to cast the ten clubs. Magic. How many L's can I club in ten minutes? Are you guys gonna stop them or what? You're just gonna let <laughs> slow down, Grimby. I'm, I'm I casting detect magic. That's, That's all fine. I can do. Yeah, but for ten minutes, Grimby's going around clubbing. Is anyone gonna do anything? <laughs> He's not killing him. He's not I'm killing him. He's just knocking him out. I'm going behind him, tying him up with the ribbon. Osman <laughs> <laughs> is shaking his head as he for watches this. For ten minutes. Okay. Well, for. T- <laughs> I mean, how many how many elves can you take out in a minute i mean i think you probably get one every 10 seconds exactly right? for a very long 10 minutes let me do the math grimby and shaft combined are able to club 600. and restrain most of the first floors elves yes um i don't know if you want to leave them and like like tie them all up and leave them in a certain heap somewhere like put them somewhere <laughs> just a pile of elves yeah, yeah. I could, we string them you together, string them together so like, when, when they try to pull from each other, they're just tightening the ribbons between them. Shakara, after the ten minutes are up, and I, what are you doing for these ten minutes, Falzern? I be grabbing some ribbon there, Falzern. <laughs> Put this off to use. Or a club. <laughs> you can knock or. our time down. On my assessment, we have about 16 to 20 minutes. You can knock that down in half if you grab some ribbon. <laughs> I'm... <laughs> I'm reluctantly helping tie up elves. You're not- <laughs> but I refuse I refuse to take part in clubbing. So Shakara, when you're detecting magic, are you walking around or staying in one place? Um, I can sense the presence of magic within thirty feet of me, so then I would Okay. Okay, within thirty feet. Okay. Oh no, it's sorry, it's it's one action, it lasts for ten minutes. Right, that's, so that's if you're ritual oh. casting, it takes 10 minutes to ritual cast it. Right, yeah. I cast it and then I walk around. So while there's probably hundreds of elves being dummied and tied up, <laughs> Shakara, up on the third balcony level, the third level of this uh, workshop, about the height of the tree, about 20 feet tall, there's a snow globe on top that has a white flashing like, it's an unsettling, eerie light that's pulsing from that snow globe on top of the tree. And it is it is emitting magic. I Can I go up to the third floor and can I grab You're it? You're up there looking over the balcony. Um, there is probably about 15 feet between you and the tree from the balcony. How sturdy is this tree? It's pretty sturdy. It's a really, really big Christmas tree. It is all decorated. I'm wondering if I could jump to the tree and... <laughs> I mean, you can grab the snow globe. Shakara, you better be clubbing up there, I tell you. This snow globe is, is glowing. It may be the cause of the problem. It's definitely doing something. Hold that thought, Shakara. I'm on my way. Ah, that's just more work for me. So I'm going <laughs> to I'm gonna hastily run up to try and find where Shakara has uh, stopped her search. Do you see it, Falzarin? That one right there. Yes, I do. Uh, what what are you detecting, Shakara? It's it's glowing. It's pulsing. Can can you grab it and bring it to us? You have your hand. Yes, I certainly can. I'll cast Mage Hand and try to grab it and pick it up. All right. And uh, what's the weight limit on that Mage Hand? I think it's five pounds. It's fifty pounds. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, if we're just going to throw numbers out there. <laughs> no, I think it's. It is ten. <laughs> 10 pounds. You're right. 10 tomorrow. pounds. Okay. So 10 pounds easily your mage hand goes and you know, it's a little bit of a struggle to get the clip off of it, but you, you bring this snow globe back into your possession with you and Shakara at the balcony. I will grab it. Yep. So looking at this globe, um, written on the side of it, it says the best way to spread Christmas cheer is singing loud for all to hear. And inside there's just a mini castle and snow fluttering down. But again, it's still emitting this eerie light and holding it, it just doesn't feel right. What it be up there, you? I'm not sure exactly what's going on with the snow globe, but I have a sneaking suspicion it is 
the culprit for all of this strange behavior. I'm gonna turn it upside down. Yeah, and the snow moves uh, back and forth, like with a snow globe. So I would like to um, cast Dispel Magic. Look at how the snow moves, Falzarin. Yes, yes, just just, just hold still for a moment, Shakara. But it's neat. It, it certainly is. Hey, I caught up, Grimby. You gonna knock another one down? I think we best be moving to the next floor. What um, level All are right. you casting Dispel Magic with? I'm gonna cast it at level three. So any spell of third level or lower on the t- on the target, which would be the snow globe, ends. For each spell of fourth level or higher, I make an ability check using my spellcasting ability. DC equals 10 plus the spell's level. Okay. So uh, I'm going to need you to do the ability check, please. Okay. So uh, 18 plus 7. Okay. Six. Yeah. It's not, like, it's not like a 20 level spell. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the snow globe stops emitting this eerie light looking at it the the castle inside the color comes back it just looks completely normal it's no longer feeling weird in shikara's hands and um the elves all wake up out of their trance um uh, ah! there's just chaos there's just there's just <laughs> freaking <laughs> screaming ah, my feet my hands what is happening oh my head my head hurts everyone's like screaming <laughs> I grab Grimby's arm and I go, use the other side now. <laughs> the, yeah. The other, the other thing is that these elves waking up that are tied up downstairs, they see Shaft and Grimby caught red-handed with the garland and ribbon in their hands. And they start getting extremely angry. What are you doing to us? What are you doing? Why are you doing this? We're saving you from killing the deer. We would never. Right, look, look at what you him. did. Look at what you did. We would never. You little miscreant. Some of the reindeer are collapsed. There's um, there's just a pile of elves um, tied up with ribbons and one faint red nose sticking up through the pile of elves. And someone goes, oh, Rudolph, where are they? And there's just like all this chattering and noise. And um, the ones up on the balcony that were not being tied up with um, Falzerin and Shakara are are hugging Shakara and hugging Falzern and saying, thank you, thank you, thank you for saving us, thank you. Oh my goodness, the Mouse King, he he controls with his mind. Should I smash this? Oh, Does no. Does the snow still yeah, move? Yeah, the snow still moves. <laughs> no, don't smash that. That's the, that's the spirit of Christmas. What can you tell me about this Mouse King? I thought Santa was the spirit of Christmas. What the hell are we going on no, here? No, he's, he's the essence. <laughs> this is the essence? No, Santa's the up. essence. The globe is the spirit. Christmas cheer. <laughs> I'll hand the globe back to the elf that's talking. Oh, thank you. And they start holding hands. They put the snow globe down. They start holding hands and singing Christmas carols and dancing in a circle because the best way to spread <sighs> Christmas cheer is singing loud for all to hear. I think this is worse. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep clubbing. <laughs> what can you tell me about this mouse king did the mouse king cast an enchantment on this globe that that has enslaved you all Hello. what is this elf's name tag say this elf is named ginger that uh, not be such a great name for a boat <laughs> never trust a ginger um um yeah hi i'm ginger and um the the mouse king just He's really, really strong with his mind, and he's controlling all these things. He's, he, there's magical snowmen. I'm guessing you ran into them, and he, oh, he just wants to ruin Christmas, and he wants all the toys and cre- presents and candy to himself. Where is he? I don't know, but I think, um, I'm kind of having some memories. Uh, Figgy, Sprinkles, Hazelnut. Do you remember what we did with Mrs. Claus? And um. The elves' eyes go wide, and they think, oh, oh, yeah. And, like, without even saying anything to you guys, they run down, um, these four elves, to the main floor, and they find a box in the corner, and they just tear through the wrapping paper, and inside the box is Mrs. Claus, kind of, like, shaking and shivering and looking very traumatized. (laughs) You're telling me this is Mrs. Claus? Yeah, this is this is Santa's wife, Mrs. Claus. Ah, uh, her claws ain't that big. Yeah, she doesn't look yeah. to have a, a scrap of mouse genetic in her. That's <laughs> disappointing, really. 
Does she have Christmas essence as well? Um, yeah, but I think the Mouse King got to her. Look, look! And Mrs. Claus is like shaking back and forth and muttering to herself. She's mumbling, the seven levels of the candy cane forest, the sea of swirly twirly gumdrops, the Lincoln Tunnel. The seven levels of the candy cane forest. <laughs> the sea of swirly twirly gumdrops. The Lincoln Tunnel. Does she look? Does, does Mrs. Claus' eyes look like they're like she's charmed or yeah, anything? Yeah, she or? looks. She looks stoned. She looks glazed over. Yeah. I'm gonna go up and, and take her hand in mine. Her claws. Slowly, you know, her, her <laughs> lift her up, and then I'm gonna look deeper into her eyes and smack her across the face and go, "What the hell does that mean?" And. uh... Mrs. Claus just goes, ho, 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 hazelnut figgy, oh, ginger, and, like, runs and kind of hides um, behind these elves crouching down. I don't know how you reached her face. <laughs> she was, okay, she was okay. laying down in the yeah, box, okay. right? <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was very nice helping her The up. elves are still in an outrage, yelling and whining and complaining, free us, free us, free us. And I mean, the, the elves that are free are, are trying to cut and um, and get the ribbons off of all the other elves. Do you guys help them or just... No. I will go around and, and start um, untying them. All right, I start swinging my axe at some of the bindings. Where should we look for this mouse king? Um, I don't know, but I can I can point you to where Santa usually is. And um, the room ends, like it's a very big area and so we're we're now um the doors you came in you're past the tree you're in the back side of the room and there is a bubbling brook of butterscotch pudding uh with a mm. peanut brittle bridge um that you see in the distance <laughs> and and that's the direction she's pointing and um pepper twinkle bottom the penguin waddles back out oh you guys you must go over the bridge but the bridge is out. The bridge. Uh, the bridge is out. The bridge is out. So it's it's broken. That's what he says. Does it look? It's brittle. Does it look like? I mean, it, do you want to walk over there? It's it's, it's like thirty five yeah, feet away. I'm, I'm gonna. Yeah. Leave the elves. Let's go save the Santa essence. Yeah. They 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 have no value to us. Let's go. I'll walk over to the bridge. All right. So and what you see this, you you see this peanut brittle bridge. Um. So obviously it's. It's kind of um, sticky. There's chunks of peanuts. Um, it's about 10 feet wide. Um, the brook is, let's say, like 20 feet wide. Um, and it appears that there's no other doors, bridges, um, nothing floating in it. And it's just like a constant flow. And there's there's really nowhere else to go. So we have to get across a 20 foot wide flowing butterscotch. Yeah. What do you want to do? I would like to uh, take a a ginger step onto this peanut brittle bridge All and see right. if it supports one of my feet. What's a good check for that? Let's see. It wouldn't really be stealth, right? Because that's like dexterity. Sneaky. Well, you're very dexterous, Falzer, and how yes. brave of you. I mean, Arcana. Yeah, let's well, let's do athletics. <laughs> let's do athletics check. It literally looks like the bridge is just cracked in the middle and a chunk fell into the river. But there is like a 10 foot gap. Oh, sorry. So instead of having to cross the river, you could potentially handle the bridge. There's like a 10 foot gap. So it's a six. Wait a minute, Falzerin, before you step on it. Yes? What is it, Shikara? I can jump across this. You can. You hold one end of the rope and I will take the other. And I will help guide you over. Okay. Oh, I think we tried this before at some point. <laughs> I got a ring of jumping, and I can jump across. All right. So I will I will pause um, and not go any farther and let Shakara take over. Ooh, you're lucky. <laughs> so I, I hand him one end of the rope, take the other end, make sure it's loose in the middle, and I jump over. At the bridge or to the side? Uh, I think... Next to the bridge, just so that I don't accidentally, like, knock something. All right, and you make it across. I will hold the other end. Now I don't know what to do. I go over to the the river. What's the river made Butterscotch out of? Butterscotch pudding. I put my finger in it. 
I look at it sort of drip off my finger. And uh, the second you put it. your finger in that butterscotch pudding, uh-oh, you uh-oh. take two points of acid damage. Oh. <laughs> it's quite hot. I pull my finger out and I go, Oh, shit. What's the plan now? This stuff's hot. Don't fall in. Hey, 20 feet, I can jump that too. Can you? Climb on me back shaft. I can jump us over. What? Uh, are you? Are you kidding? Yeah, actually, I'm not. I can long jump over this. With someone on your back, though, you're gonna have to. You're definitely gonna have to roll a pretty good athletics check. That's that's cool. So yeah, I mean, long jump. If I take a, a ten foot run, I can jump a number of feet equal to my strength score, which is a full twenty. So I can use my thirty of my movements to to run and jump. Okay. And then whatever you want me to make with shaft on my if shaft's gonna get on my back. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll look down at the at the river. I'll look up at you and I'll go. You can jump all the way over there. <laughs> it's be a piece of cake. Are this you cake jumping all alone, or are you using the rope with Shakara that she has out? No, I'm just. I don't need the rope. Okay. <laughs> I appreciate it, Shakara, but uh, <laughs> I got this. Yeah, make me a uh, athletics. I am impressed. That's, I have a plus nine to athletics, and that is a 13. <laughs> oh, I'm oh. not as impressed. Oh, yeah. God. So, unfortunately, Grimby, you make it over the river, but Shaft cannot hold on as you have an unsteady jump, and Shaft falls into the butterscotch pudding. Wow. Can you believe what just happened? Oh, my gosh. The, uh, things are just getting crazy. You can visit us at incorrigibleparty.com for additional world NPC information to get all your Incorrigible Party merchandise. Join us on our Discord, linked on our website. Recently, the Incorrigible Party has started streaming on Twitch. Do you want to watch video games, board games, interact with us, catch us on live after-party recordings, follow us on Twitch at Incorrigible Party. If for some reason... Probably because you're incorrigible, like us, you can't get enough of our content, please support us on Patreon. Our Patreon gives you early releases to episodes, extra inspiration to give your favorite hero, Mia, wink wink, or the DM, I suppose. Patreon exclusive content includes Patreon exclusive mini campaigns. This podcast is sponsored by Critical Hit Design at criticalhitdesign.com. Thanks to Tabletop Audio for allowing us to use any ambient sounds or music during our show. And our intro and outro is by Josh Jarvis. Contact him at jamesmercymusic at gmail.com for any inquiries. Happy adventuring!